How did I not know this earlier? The one simple tip to make any Fujifilm camera a better hybrid setup. It would have saved me so much hassle. G'day guys and girls, and thank you for joining me today. It is so good to see your smiling faces on the other side of this camera. But today we're talking about the Fujifilm system. The number one tip that I wish I knew a bloody long time ago to make any Fujifilm camera a better hybrid setup for photographers and videographers out there saving you so much time and hassle when out in the field. Before we get into that, I'm Matthew Storer, a travel and landscape photographer from Australia, traveling to least explored countries around the world, showcasing the beauty and diversity through my photography on this channel. So if that interests you, please drop below and subscribe for future content. But about 12 or 18 months ago, I've done a review about the X-H1. Not just about the X-H1, but any Fujifilm system right now, there's a little bit of problems that I would love to see. Better battery life, flip screen, and AF performance, but I can handle all these ones. But the one thing that I don't personally like about the Fujifilm system is the operation to change from photography to videography. It's quite fiddly right now, and most of you out there watching right now are Fujifilm users or interested in the Fujifilm system, and we want small, lightweight. So we don't want to carry around two cameras, one for photography, one for videography. So how can we make this one tip in camera to make our system a little bit of a better hybrid setup? That's what I want to talk about right now, and let's jump straight into it. First of all, we're going to turn the camera on quite obviously and go over to the film simulation mode. From here, I like to shoot everything in 24 frames a second. So whatever you shoot in, 24, 30, whatever it is, set your camera up to that right now. From here, I want to go 48 shutter speed. Then I want to set my aperture to f4 because most of my film lenses that I use right now are 10 to 24 and 16 to 80 are f4 lenses. So 148. F4, and then we're gonna set native base ISO on the X-H1 is 800. So this right now is what we would normally film at day in, day out. But we wanna add a little bit in here. We're gonna go into our menu setting and go to the left sub menu and go down to the wrench. From here, we wanna push across button dial settings. From here, function settings. Now, this is personal taste. So I've set my camera up to muscle memory to put every button on here as a custom dial to what I personally use. So what I suggest for you is go through on your camera and find a button that isn't being used right now and then allocate this, what we're about to find out, to one of those. So for me, it's function three, the directional pad up. We wanna go through this menu now and find a thing called movie silent control. Once we find it, push okay. Now we've allocated movie silent control to this button. So we go back to the film simulation mode and push that button that you found. So for me, the up directional pad, going to say movie silent control on. So we've activated that movie silent control. What has that done? Everything we have done in camera now, we have basically disabled. So I can move all my knobs on top, my aperture, whatever it is, and nothing's going to change as you can see on the back of the screen. So we have locked this in to the movie mode, which is pretty cool. So how do we get this implemented into our camera to assist us further in this field. So now, what I do is shoot at 5.6. So I find this for my cameras specifically, uh, my lenses specifically, sorry, that 5.6 is a really good balance between sharpness, depth of field, and getting that shutter speed control. Then, with the shutter speed, I set it to automatic because I like to shoot most of my stuff in aperture priority, that 5.6. Now, this is a little bit different. As a user of the camera, I want full control over the ISO because it might set a mood, it might set different depths with shadows and all that sort of stuff, depending on the situation we're in, indoor, outdoor, if it's outdoors, is it cloudy, is it blue, bright as daylight? So I want to control that ISO setting. So that obviously our goal here at the end of the day is to get it as low as possible to introduce less noise. Now we can't take a photo, so obviously we want to go back to S, CL, whatever it is, continuous, high, continuous, low, whatever you are shooting in your conditions. Now, as soon as you go back, you can see straight away that everything's set to the custom dials on top. So, camera is reading out that. So when I put my hand in front, you can see the shutter speed is changing in due course of what we have set in. So this is where we've got a little bit of a hybrid setup. Super, super cool, right? We go back to that video mode, and you can see our cinematic movement is plugged in. Absolutely perfect. Recording in vlog, shooting in JPEG and RAW, we are pretty travel film photography happy. 
Now, let's say we want some slow motion footage. This is where things get a little bit annoying because if we push up on the directional pad, you can see our settings go straight back to that aperture priority that we wanted for the photography side of things. Now for me, I've set another custom dial for the down on the D-pad to do full HD recording in higher speed mode. So here we want to choose obviously 120 frames or 60 frames, whatever it is. Then we would obviously just as per normal, one over 24 and record that our slow motion. From here, we want to go back to the original settings. Okay, so we turn off high speed recording mode. We go back to 1 over 48, ISO 800, and then F4. Simple, as we just said, push up on the directional pad and we have saved those settings in. The only thing we should have to do now is control our ISO through how much light is let in for the variable ND when we're outside, if we need it. Go back to our single mode shoot everything we want, absolutely perfect. Because so many times I was out, whatever it was with my friends or whatever, just traveling, trying to get someone and be like, just, just wait, I'm just gonna change this and change this. And, oh, no, sorry, not just, just wait one second. Yep, perfect, now just walk. Oh, that looks really cool. Oh, you want a photo? Okay, just one second, I'm just gonna change Oh, it's, it's blurry. Yeah, just one second. Super annoying for all Fujifilm users. You know exactly what I'm talking about if you've been out there doing that. I wish I'd done this a long bloody time ago because especially when I was in Egypt, I wasted so much time. And if not worse, the worst possible thing we can do is not capture the footage or image. This is not perfect, but it's going to improve your photography and videography when traveling as that hybrid setup shoe that I love to do in all sorts of my travel styles, whatever it is, especially when I'm working for like high-end clients, I wanna try and get as much possible information, content in camera as I can, if it's photography or videography, it doesn't matter. Guys, let me know in the comments below, are you using this movie site control mode and has it changed your life? If I had this in Egypt, I guarantee I would've got so much more footage and better quality footage because of it. I really hope you hybrid shoes out there have got something from this video because it's helped me immensely through all my travels. Because that is me done for today, giving this little tip to hopefully improve your Fujifilm system. Also in the description below, the links for my workshop for Slovenia, Tromso, wherever it is around the world. Because that is me done for today. I will see you on the next one. Ciao. Lights, camera. Atlas backpacks, get them, they're amazing. <laughs>